Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Well, my favorite wrestler is certainly Bret Hart after the final episode of Who Killed WCW. <laughs> One of the uh, smartest guys in the whole documentary. He knew his uh, stuff. It was exactly what we thought. It was all about rehabbing Eric Bischoff in the end. Looking out into the sunset as the show ended, he was a great guy. He had so many great ideas, but he was just fucked by those executives. And God. Well, I mean, they did have B Booker T and Bret. Both blamed him, but yeah. but but the pro it was very much, it was very much a, a, a yeah a rehab project on, on Bischoff, you know, almost to the well, I don't want to do, do conspiracy theories. It's not really fair, but you know when you consider, I mean, it's not like they didn't put Brett on. It's not like they didn't put Bill Goldberg on. You know, I mean, it's not like they were out there not wanting dissenting views, but and and a lot of the stuff, you know, in the episode they did talk about the losses. You know, um, Guy Evans, you know. Well, they did, but they blamed him on everything but the product sucking. Uh, they said, was, oh, were... you know, there was a lot of transferring from other divisions that were failing. I was like, really? Well, huh. it, it, You know, that went both ways. Yes. they. The other divisions uh, helped pay for gigantic contracts. I mean, like, I, I, I'll, give, I'll give you an example. You know, like um, in 98, which was one of the biggest years, you know, the, the WCW books listed Hulk Hogan's contract at or a payment at 3.7 million dollars but hulk hogan was guaranteed six hundred and seventy five thousand dollars every pay-per-view or 15 percent okay which would be in many of the cases like um let's say the 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 hogan sting which let's say, say did uh you know um 19.5 so about 10 million dollars so he would have made a million five on that one he would have made about the same on um the Rodman pay-per-view, you know, because um, they did giant, you know, the Rodman Malone pay-per-view. So that's that's in, you know, not in addition to the 675, but that's a, above and beyond. So if you if, if Hogan did like eight pay-per-views, including like those big ones, you know, I mean, that's way, way more than that. And I'm not even starting on the merchandise where he got 50 percent on all NWO merchandise. I mean, if you look at his contract, which is available, I mean, you'll see that it's far more than 3.7 million so who where exactly was that money coming from you know and i mean i remember when brett not you know, brett the deal that brett signed was with wcw it was a full deal but the year before in 96 when uh, brett was negotiating um they had it was it was a 2.8 million dollar a year deal so this is in 96 and in that deal only 800,000 of that money was coming from WCW. The other 2 million were to make two movies a year at $1 million a year. But of course, but the deal was is that I mean they were they were going to try to make the two movies. They never did. And when he, when he signed the year later, they, it was a different deal. You know, it was not that same deal. But um but that's just an example of the exact opposite. I mean, it went both like it went both ways. I remember Jim Hurd talking to me about um you know, the pay-per-view revenue and it's like you know i mean i get the number of buys we get and our percentage but our company's getting like way less and i'm trying to figure out it doesn't add up and the fact was is that turner home entertainment was the partner with wcw in the pay-per-view so they took a cut of the pay-per-view so wcw didn't get credit for all of it of course turner home entertainment helped market it i mean so there's something to that but it's like, you know, um, but the company, yeah, the company was a disaster. They did mention that, um, what was the, 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 the pay-per-view, where they did the exact same pay-per-view one year later did... Uh, it was the February... Uh, the February yeah. pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah, where it did um, 325000 and they came back a year later, and they were down 81% with a Hogan Flair match. So, I mean, that, that told you that that, that, that but... You know the the so so the thing on that, and this is the one that like hit me the most, was there's, you know, when you go back, I mean, one of the things I'm cursed with is is a really good memory of that time period, and obviously, many of the people that were interviewed do not have that curse, um, and some of them are just probably flat out liars too. But the way that they were explaining everything, like Eric Eric's thing, just an example. Eric is talking like, uh, you know, that that uh, 
you know, the deal was made with WWE, and he's suspicious of it, which, by the way, he should be, um, which I'll get to in a second. But, you know, he goes like that, that they made this deal, and then down the line, all of a sudden, Stu Snyder has this big, important title in WWF at that time. And it's like, well, that's, act not, that's not even close to how it happened. Stu Snyder was the president of WWF, when they and the man who negotiated the deal, he didn't get this the title of WWF president later because some deal was made. He made the deal himself, and I don't think that Eric was lying. It's just Eric, you know. It's this looks as twenty five years ago, you know. Um, now the one who I don't believe at all was Stu Snyder, and they did go right on camera and and at, you know they kind of asked him the question, and I mean like I've said this before, January eleventh. Uh, 2001, which is the day of the press conference where they announced that Fusion Media has bought WCW. When that that day, right after that press conference, within hours, you know, um, I got a phone call from a high-ranking executive in WWF, who said, "Look, Stu Snyder, who was friends with Brad Siegel, told us that no matter what they said, they are never." getting eric bischoff is not getting that company and it's like well they just had a press conference because i know they just had a press conference but Stu snyder's insisted to us that they are not getting that company now this is um jamie kellner's not hired until march this is january 11th so he knew something on january 11th because it sure did turn out that they bought the company but even when like like the way that they're portraying the thing is eric is there and the company's losing money, and he goes, how about I buy this? They go to them, the company says no at first, then they come to Eric, hey, see if you can get some business partners, maybe we wanna sell. It's like, you know, um, and they put this thing, this deal together, and it's like, you know, Vince got the deal first, and he was not, it wasn't like, you know, they go, you know, like, like they were, they were just like, hey, Eric, maybe you could buy it, and it's the only guy that they're selling to. It's like Jerry Jarrett wanted it. I know that Jeff Blatnick had called me. There were some backers in upstate New York that were attempting to buy it. Bruno had called me. There were backers out of Pittsburgh who wanted to buy it um, that he was involved with. Uh, Jerry Jarrett, who I didn't talk to much, but Jerry Jarrett talked to Wade Keller all the time, I believe. I don't, I don't know that as a... I mean, I know it as a fact. Um, Wade Keller would probably have a... A very good idea because Wade Keller did a great job of reporting. Um, he really should have been on. If it wasn't me or you, he should have been on this thing because um, if his memory is, is is like it should be, because he knows a lot of bullshit that, uh, you know, he, he'd be able to go through a lot of bullshit on this thing. But, um, I mean, like, the thing is, is like they had a deal with Vince. Vince told me this himself. They had a deal at the end of 2000 with Vince, and the, the snag was is that Vince had signed that exclusive deal with uh, TNN, Spike, and, you know, that, and these guys, you know, for as much as all these stories are how they wanted to get rid of wrestling, the fact is they could have sold to Vince, and I'm sure at a hell of a lot more money than they did, or to any of these people. But the key was is that if you bought this, you had to guarantee them a wrestling show for all this time. Another thing that happened, and this, this again, I don't know if Eric knows this. I don't know if he knows it and forgot. But he's talking on this thing about how, you know, you were guaranteed two shows a week. But before Jamie Kellner was hired, they had already made the decision, and nobody said this, to cancel the Monday show. It was only going to be, T TNT was not going to, you know, TNT was not going to have any more wrestling. It was going to only be on TBS um, because they thought that TNT was uh, too high scale. So a lot of this Jamie Kellner stuff, and he did, he was the guy who, who, um, you know, you know, made the final decision that rendered the value of the company pretty worthless. Um, you know, that's true. But I mean, it was like there were so many things going on, and I am, you know, completely convinced that some of these dealings were because, um, you know, Brad Siegel and Stu Snyder were trying to put together a deal. But the freaking problem was is that, you know, Turner, Ted Turner, insisted on wrestling staying on the station. Um, 
you know, but so many of this stuff happened before Jamie Kellner. Jamie Kellner wasn't hired until March. And yeah, the first movie made was to uh, cancel it. And not only just cancel the, it, but but that no station under their auspices, which were a lot of stations at the time, would air pro wrestling. They were done with pro wrestling. And that is what killed it. Um, the Eric story, you know, where he talks about how, um, you know, he gets this call from Brian Bedol and he says, we're done. He said, oh, the deal's done. We've made it. And he goes, no, 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 we're done. We're out of it. It's like, that's a good story. And he's told it before. But the day that, you know, Brian, you lived through this thing. You know, we were we were on the air freaking every day when this was going on. And, you know, you'll remember by the end, I mean, we knew, you know, we knew that the thing was falling apart. It wasn't like it just, it wasn't like it was, the, the deal was ready to go. And then one day it fell apart. This thing was falling apart from the announcement, not so much from the announcement, but from, um, you know, when when Kellner, the day, put it this way, the day Kellner said that, the whole thing was had fallen apart. And before that, they had it. So it was like once that happened, and I remember I called Eric up, you know, um, right after that. The, the other thing which they didn't talk about when they were, which which I guess maybe too much in the weeds, but really isn't. You know, they were talking about all the money they raised, $60 million or whatever, to get this thing. You know, a lot of the financing, a lion's share of it was from Warburg Pincus. They were going to back it. And Warburg Pincus, you know, this is now this would be after January 11th. They were going through the books of WCW, and they found it to be far worse than they thought it would be, and they backed out. I mean, and I remember this one, because Wade Keller had had wrote, written that the backing had fallen apart, and I had not heard that. He had that before I did, and as soon as I heard that, I called up Bischoff, and Bischoff said, it's a lie, it's not true, it's not true. We didn't come to find out, of course it was true. So the idea that, you know, and that's one of the things is that they didn't have all that money to buy it. Then again, did they have enough more money to buy it than, than $4.2 million or $2.5 million, however you wanted to have that sale, which I'll get to in a second? Of course they did. They had way more than that, but they didn't have, you know, $60 million. Um, you know, and then, you know, other but other people had... There were other people out there that were willing to buy this thing for 15 and 20 million. Jared in particular, and Jared never could understand. I remember Jared telling me, he goes like, I couldn't, um, you know, we were offering way more than Vince and he wouldn't negotiate with us at all. And then when I talked with people at TBS, their, their belief was, is that they did not trust that any of these people, which would include Eric's group, really had the money that they say they had or they did or that it was spread over payments and time and they thought they weren't going to get paid okay the problem was is that even if they didn't have the 20 million and maybe they would have defaulted later um but maybe the, the feeling was you know because at this point they're not they're no longer they no longer care that they can keep the product alive because the reality was is that um the uh you know they'd already canceled the tv at this point when this is going down so it didn't even matter you know like they weren't they weren't doing it because we want to keep our wrestling and vince is the only one we trust that will not bankrupt this wrestling company um i mean it was just a a, a money thing and you know vince got it for for you know the original deal was 2.5 million dollars um the 4.2 million actually they said 4.3 but whatever it is that the other 1.7 was for the tape library and um you know obviously it was an incredible steal for for wwf at the time but um there were so many fishy things that were going down but when they asked snyder and he said like you know he had no idea it's like you were telling everyone the day you're telling everyone the day that went down that it wouldn't happen and and um you know that was one where it was like man I wish I was on the show because there's so much stuff that I remember going down day by day during that period. And um, I know that, uh, you know, I mean, there's a reason, obviously, you know, I mean, uh, that I wasn't there. And there's a reason you weren't there, you know, but it could have been Wade Keller, you know, who did a great job on reporting it. But, um, you know, and then, you know, like I said, a lot of the there's a lot of stuff like even Brad, Brad Siegel was, uh, 
he said something, you know, as far as like, you know, his timeline was were completely off, um, you know, but it's again, it's it's people trying to recount, you know, to to Brad Siegel wrestling was not a big part of his life like his memory of this stuff i mean it's like it was like one of those disastrous things he was involved in you know he ain't gonna remember stuff in the right order or anything like that from you know 20 plus years ago um you know it's not like it was a big thing to him like it would be to say me you know because we didn't want we didn't want to see what would ha what would happen with wrestling as what I expected would happen with wrestling when WCW was gone and ECW was gone, which would not be a pretty thing. And it was not a pretty thing. And wrestling went through a pretty major downturn right at that point. And that's the last thing, you know, I wanted to see and what, and the way it was covered and everything. But, um, you know, like, like, I think that that was the thing that bothered me was, again, like the other episodes, um, this one bothered me less than some of the other ones. But just the fact that there was so much off from a timing standpoint so many bad memories and nobody you know it wasn't like russo was a big part of this one but there was just so much stuff that it was just like you know you need someone to explain that so many of these guys have just forgotten too much of this stuff and so much of it didn't happen the way they said it and um you know and not even the malicious stuff and again some of it was it did sure seem like it was a reclamation project you know, um, and, you know, in the end, you know, whether it was, you know, you know, at the end, it's it's Dwayne's thing. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it went the way that they wanted it for whatever reason. And I don't know what that reason was. Like I said, they didn't exclude Brett. Um, Sting didn't want to do it. Their story was that Rick Flair, you know, wanted too much money, which could be true, that Jamie Kellner wouldn't talk, you know, um, you know, and he had passed away. They tried to get him. But, um, yeah, I mean, from a media standpoint, I mean, you know, they, they needed a media guy. They needed a media guy bad on this one um, because there was way too much stuff that, uh, way too much bullshit and way too much stuff that was important to the story, timeline-wise, that uh, they really botched up. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.